The Biden administration's push for a military invasion of Haiti has received a brand new endorsement from one of the largest human rights groups in the world, Human Rights Watch. Yes, they're endorsing an invasion of Haiti. Redacted correspondent Dan Cohen has been following the Haiti story closer than just about anyone, and he joins us now. Dan, this is quite an endorsement from a Human Rights Watch group. <laughs> Well, it really says everything, I think, about the human rights industry and what its actual role is and why it exists and gets huge amounts of money from uh, the oligarchy, from the billionaire class and has access to the White House, as I'm going to demonstrate. So basically what happened is Human Rights Watch published a 98 page report documenting human rights abuses in Haiti and ultimately concluding that a military intervention is acceptable within parameters that it lists out. Now, keep in mind, the U.S. is pushing for this military intervention at the United Nations and is now awaiting the results of a Kenyan mission to Haiti to determine what that intervention should look like, what it should consist of. So instead of opposing military force, where which it certainly did when it came to uh, for example, Russia's intervention in Ukraine, which it loudly denounced and called a war crime, it just gives some recommendations to kind of, you know, keep things uh, clean and nice. So here, the Human Rights Watch report says any authorization of the consensual deployment of an international force, as requested by Haitian authorities and the UN Secretary General, should be primarily composed of police officers and should support the Haitian National Police's efforts to restore basic security. Now, that happens to be the exact formulation that the United States and Canadian governments have called for. This is back in March uh, when um, uh, President Biden appeared with uh, Trudeau uh, to talk about a uh, intervention in Haiti. Watch this. Today I'm announcing that Canada will invest an additional $100 million to provide better police support to the national police force in Haiti. So this Human Rights Watch report is not just flawed. It is rife with disinformation, actually pumped out of Haiti's foremost human rights group, which we exposed, uh, myself and Haiti Liberté, uh, the, the Haitian uh, weekly newspaper. We exposed this in our documentary called Another Vision Inside Haiti's Uprising, which you can see on my YouTube channel, Uncaptured Media. And this report that, that Human Rights Watch uh, 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 released yesterday contains claims about a massacre in a slum called La Saline. And this supposed massacre is basically like Haiti's weapons of mass destruction or chemical weapons attacks. It's been the pretext for all kinds of sanctions and has really been uh, the key to laying the groundwork for this apparently imminent intervention. And the claim behind the Lasseline massacre is that uh, a guy named Jimmy Cherizier, who we've covered here on Redacted and is the, the central figure in our documentary, he's a former cop turned Robin Hood-like figure who now leads an anti-crime federation of armed groups called the G9. And the, the accusation is that he carried out this massacre uh, in La Saline, this, uh, this alleged massacre. And they also claim, this is the, the, the sort of Trump-Russia kind of claim, is that Cherizier is a tool of the government, which is totally 100% false. There's no evidence. So here, Human Rights Watch claims Cherizier and the G9, his federation, carried out this La Saline massacre. But if you look at the footnote in this report, it references a group called the RNDDH, which is the Haitian National Network for Human Rights, Haiti's foremost human rights group. And in fact, both the RNDDH and Human Rights Watch are funded by, among others, George Soros's Open Society Foundation. They have the exact same funder. And this blatant conflict of interest is not disclosed in this report. And even you know, Open Society is now headed by George Soros's son, Alexander Soros. George Soros handed over the reins. And Alexander Soros frequently meets with Biden officials at the White House. He is, uh, if you look at the visitor logs on the White House website, and this has been reported, he meets with National Security uh, uh, Council officials regularly. So the RNDDH, this Haitian so-called human rights group, is also funded by the National Endowment for Democracy, the 
notorious uh, CIA cut cutout that has been involved in all kinds of color revolutions and destabilization plots all over the world. Um, Human Rights Watch also put out a video, a six-minute video that's on YouTube to accompany its big report on Haiti. And part of it is dedicated. This is the foremost so-called gang leader uh, is, is Jimmy Cherizier. They, they demonize him. So watch this. NF is the deadliest criminal group operating in Cité Soleil and other areas of Port-au-Prince. Its leader is former police officer Jimmy Cherizier. Now, the footage of Cherizier that they used is key to understanding how this propaganda actually works. It looks scary. He's chanting something. He has a big rifle and is surrounded by young men with masks. But what he's actually doing there is leading a demonstration against crime, against kidnapping, and against thievery. We have the exact same footage, well, the same footage, uh, we have that same demonstration, rather, in our documentary. And unlike Human Rights Watch, we actually show you what they're saying. So there's a lot more to that demonstration, which you can actually, you know, you can see in our documentary. The Human Rights Watch sure won't show you. But that incident, what happened is Pierre Esperance, head of that of the RNDDH, that human rights group funded by Soros, falsely accused the G9, Jimmy Cherizier and the G9, of kidnapping a pastor who was later released. So what we have here is a complex disinformation operation by Human Rights Watch and basically its miniature clone in Haiti, the RNDDH, all with the intent of justifying and sugarcoating a military invasion of Haiti uh, uh, asked for, requested by its illegitimate de facto prime minister who has never been elected, never been put to a vote, and all of this to subdue Haiti to U.S. interests. I, I reported a couple days ago on my site, Uncaptured Media, that not only has Human Rights Watch endorsed this invasion, but the American apparel industry, the head of the industry, endorsed the invasion too. So you can see all of these interests coming together, the human rights industry, the apparel industry that uh, basically exploits Haiti for, for sweatshop labor because there are no uh, labor laws, no protection, um, and then the U.S. government, all of them coming together as this popular uprising with revolutionary potential coalesces in Haiti. Yeah, it's not surprising at all to see these groups coming together that can exploit Haiti for its resources, its cheap labor, its slave labor, essentially. And going through this Human Rights Watch report, there's a couple of other things, too, that you didn't even mention yet, which is like they use, they continue to spin the cholera story which uh, you've been you, you've debunked when you've been in Haiti. Um, the parliament has failed to exist. It doesn't really serve the people anymore. It's collapsed. There is no security. Um, and these armed gangs are running rampant. But the cholera piece is a big piece of the story too, is it not? Yeah, the cholera piece, I mean, first of all, cholera was introduced by uh, the United Nations uh, back during its, during its um, you know, long occupation. Um, so that's why cholera is in Haiti in the first place, when United Nations soldiers were defecating in, uh, uh, in um, a, a river, uh, in, in water sources. And so what's happened is ca cholera has always existed uh, in Haiti since then. Um, it's basically just a result of sewage mixing with uh, water that people drink. And so in the slums, they have no choice but to drink whatever kind of dirty water. And so when um, I went down there and reported for Redacted back in November, um, I saw how people are forced to drink um, basically water that they collect on the ground because they have no other water source. There is no potable water. And so they inevitably get cholera. And then when the United States and the, you know, the so-called international community want to turn on um, you know, their interventionist propaganda machine, they'll say, oh, there's a cholera outbreak in Haiti when Cholera is always there. It's always there because of the conditions that these people are forced to live in. And I even spoke to, to nurses and medical professionals um, who live, who are from there, and also foreign um, uh, nurses who come and you know try to to provide medical services to the to people in these slums. And they say, yeah, I mean, as long as we've been coming here, there's always been cholera. So that's you know suddenly you hear this crisis is breaking out in Haiti when. Haiti is subjected to a permanent crisis that is the result 
of uh, the, the situation it is subjected to by outside powers, namely the United States and then its junior partners in Canada and France. Um, so the cholera, the cholera story is just, you know, they, they like any of these crises, they turn it on, pretend that it's something new and demands some kind of intervention. And then, you know, when they kind of get the situation they want, ah, then they forget about Haiti back to normal. Well, and they get away with it because there there's no coverage of it. There's no media coverage of it and no one questioning it other than what you're doing and what we're doing here on Redacted to get to the bottom of this story and actually shine a light on this. Um, so when we were started hearing about the United States itching to invade Haiti, uh, we absolutely wanted to find out what was going on here. And Dan has been doing a remarkable job at the tip of this. Thank you so much, Dan, for your coverage of this um, and exposing what Human Rights Watch is all about. Thanks, Dan. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.